Shalom, 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 everyone. I just want to welcome all of you um, to tonight's show. It's going to be a very interesting show, as you see from the title. I'm dealing with this idea of missionary work, right? This idea of being a missionary. And it's a very uh, complex idea. Um, this idea of being a missionary and I really want to get into it because recently, um, I was told that I was a Christian missionary and I was like, um, what in the world are you talking about? <laughs> Where did you get that from? Like that was that was my initial thing. Like, okay, I'm a what and a what? Like, where the world did you get that from? Uh, what is going on with that? Um, I don't know how I felt about that. Um, it was actually uh, Ashkenazim Azim. Well. I or well, I think felt like I was trying to be uh, some kind of way. I was trying to be a missionary with him, which is not the case at all. I was just like, okay, that's kind of crazy <laughs> that, that you would think this. And I'm glad that he brought it up. Uh, a lot of times things happen and you don't really understand why. Um, recently, I've been having some conversation with some strong brethren. We got past the formalities and we was able to actually have some conversation. I got to see, you know, different ways that they were looking at things. And it kind of made me say, OK, you know, these brothers um, are about some different things and they're really trying to, to do some stuff. And. It's, it's different things holding us back. One of the things holding us back, I believe, and in, in exactly is what was going on with me and this Ashkenazi brother that was having this conversation. I can't even say it was a conversation. Uh, the guy was actually trying to be disrespectful uh, most of the time in the Hebraic community and in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the Jewish community when they come to us brothers who keep Torah and believe in the Rebbe. And when I say the Rebbe, I mean Rebbe Yashu ben Yosef. Most of the time uh, for us, when when people see that, uh, they just automatically label you a Christian. And it's sort of the way that it was done in Antioch. I know most of y'all who know about Christian Christianity and stuff and y'all see it in in the, in the Bible you know uh, for those who are renewed covenant readers it says that they were first called Christians in Antioch and many take that to be something good like oh yeah it was first called Christians there but notice what it says it says they were called Christians they didn't call themselves Christians it didn't say, and they first began to call themselves Christians in Antioch, or they took on a title Christians. They were called Christians. It was a term to be disrespectful to them. It wasn't nothing to be a badge of honor, um, as many people now take it today. Uh, and we can see that even with the N-word, when we use the N-word, um, we was called in words, right, to belittle you, um, to, uh, as a byword, as a slur against you, right? Even though we knew that wasn't what we were. But now, our youth take it as a badge of honor and they run around like, yeah, in word, yeah, yeah, son. And it's like, what is going on here? Like, Really, you know, then us older people are kind of like off with it a little bit, and the younger people are like, "Y'all don't get it, y'all out of out of whack with it." And we like, "Yeah, you're right. We we don't get it." 
So that's the same situation that's happening there. That's the same situation that's happening there. So what I did uh, as of late from talking with the brethren and other people, you know, I said, I, I see as far as for us brethren coming together on Torah, this is something that's holding us away from each other because we too busy trying to prove, Yo, I'm going to prove you this. No, I'm going to prove that I'm not this. I'm going to prove that you are this. I'm going to prove that I'm not this. Oh, I'm going to prove it. I'm going to prove it. I'm going to prove it. And we don't talk about the stuff that we need to talk about which is Torah. This is not about proving anything, right? And the rabbi never went around trying to prove anything. Then go around saying, hey, guys, look at me. I'm the Mashiach. <laughs> I'm prove it. I'm prove it. He didn't do that. So why are we doing it? I just thought about it. Like, I, I, me and this, this one brother uh, uh, was going back and forth all night. Like, going back and forth, he was saying slick stuff out his mouth. I was saying slick stuff back out my mouth, back and forth all night with him trying to prove that I was a Christian and me trying to prove that I'm not. And and then it just clicked like, what am I doing? The Rebbe didn't do this. He didn't sit around and try to get people to prove who he was and all of that stuff. We won't get into that, but I just I just had to say that, that at that point I told the brothers, I said, look, man, I'm not even going to try to, to, to hold you on it. I'm not going to try to battle with you about who I am and who I'm not because you want to believe whatever you want to believe about me. Regardless of what I say, if you got my, your mind made up that this is who I am, I don't care what kind of documented proof I bring, you still going to look at me like, no, nah, that's you, that's you. I, mm -mm, I ain't even buying it. I ain't even buying it. So it don't matter. Like, it's a waste of time. And now I'm like, okay, let's get in the Torah. Now, now we can really build and go somewhere, you know, and then maybe from there, as you see me building in Torah with you, then you'll say, wow, this brother deep in Torah, maybe I was wrong about him. So just me trying to prove it and prove it and prove it, you know, just show it. Let's go with Torah. Let's, let's build. Let's talk about the Holy Day, Shabbat, Kosher, all of the 613 mitzvot and, and, and how we need to be keeping and doing these things. Because those are the things that bring back the redemption, that brings back the captivity and, and causes the redemption. Those are the things that do that, right? Not me hopping on, you got to believe this and you got to read this book and all this other stuff is not doing any of that. Our main focal point that we all need to be in agreement on is Torah. Do we all agree that the Torah is the Torah? If we all agree that the Torah is the Torah, then there you go. We all agree that the Torah is the Torah. Do we all agree that the Tanakh is the Tanakh? Okay, well, at the time when when Rebbe, when the Rebbe was walking, that's all he had was the Tanakh. It was no Brit Kadashah. Everybody had the same books. So that's where we got to be at. We got to be right back there where we all got the same books. We looking at this and we coming to some agreement so that we can move forward. Because either way, as, as one of the, the, the great sages of old said, if it is what it is, it's nothing anybody can do to stop it, right? So if, if the rabbi is the Mashiach, whether you want to believe it now or not, it's not going to stop anything when, when, when the end comes, right? And if he's not, which, you know, I don't agree that he's not, uh, but for those of y'all who might believe that he's not, if 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 you and some brothers are being strong in Torah and keeping Miss Vote, then what's the problem? You know, it's a win-win. Is a win for you because we keep a Torah. Is a win for us because we keep a Torah. Either way, we keep a Torah is a win. That's what it's all about. That's what got it is in this dilemma in the first place. All of us who are uh, West African Jews or Hebrew Israelites, or as some will label us, black Hebrew Israelites. 
<laughs> whatever you want to call yourself, right? What got us in this predicament is us breaking Torah. What's got us in this predicament is us not standing firm on the word. So if that's what got us in this predicament, and he said what's going to get us out of this predicament is when we turn and start doing what he says to do. Then why are we wasting time arguing over dumb stuff? Let's just do what he says to do. Right? That's the bottom line. That's what the rabbi came for. He didn't come so you can believe in him. Now, some might say, well, no, I, I believe he did come so we can believe in him. Okay, we're going to get into that in a minute. Um, for those who was in service on Shabbat, um, some of this might sound familiar. I might, I mean, since I'm talking, I'm, I'm probably getting more in depth than, than when you actually doing a message. I get a little more deeper. I got a video that I'm about to show um, that's going to cover some stuff. Um so we're going to go from there, right? But I really want to want to get into this because I believe that this is important. And I promised the brother, um, brother Timothy, um, that I was going to actually do a reaction to his video next week where we could talk about an issue um, dealing with Isaiah 53. So for those of y'all who love to get in Isaiah 53 and the mystery of Isaiah 53, um, it's going to be a deep one. I don't know how many parts it might be to get through it. Cause you know me, I get a jibbity jabbity a little long. You know what I mean? I, I run my mouth a little long <laughs> and I don't even know how long this video is. This video might be an hour. So you know, it's going to be a few. So I told him I might don't get through it at the first two. I might have to pause and go to something else and come back with a part three and a part four and all this other stuff. But I did give him my word that I'm going to actually go through it and really look at it. I'm not going to be one of them brothers who got my mind made up and hey, I'm just going to be like, oh, okay, what he say? Blah, blah, blah. That's not me. Um, I try to stay true because what we try and do now is build. We try and build up the kingdom. So we got to come together. So we got to have some camaraderie um, and, 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 and build each other up. So, you know, this uh this a build up his his video and 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 then and, and we can go from there so i'm really looking forward to that so that's going to be next week so put that on your calendar next week we're going to go into isaiah 53 we're going to look at brother uh timothy's uh video dealing with that and i believe the name of his uh channel is doa I believe, but I have all that together, at least by Thursday or Friday. I try to put the banner up early so everybody can get ready, get your popcorn and your snacks, and we can just dig into all of this stuff and get deep into that. All right, so now with the reason why we're here, this idea of what is a missionary, right? So what is a missionary? That's what we're going to get into. As we get into this, what is a missionary? Um, I got a video. Now, this video that I have is a video, uh, it's a child's video. And I felt like, okay, I want to have a, I put this child's video up so that we can really look at this. And I didn't want nothing where it's going to have to be a lot of explanation. I, I found something where the people were talking to children and trying to give them a very simplistic and brief, but in-depth enough so we can have this conversation, idea of what a missionary is. Um... So I want to deal with that. Like, what is a missionary? Let's 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 get deep into that. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and play the clip so that we can um look at that. So let me go ahead and start the clip. What is a missionary? Hi, I'm Zachary with Kids Enjoying Jesus, and I want to tell you about missionaries. There are missionaries all around the world, but what exactly is a missionary and what do they do? 
To answer that question, I want you to meet two missionaries and think about two questions. What do these missionaries have in common? And how are these missionaries different? Let's go. Hi, I'm Josh. I trusted in Jesus when I was young. And now that I'm older, I think God wants me to use my life to help others learn how they can trust in Jesus as their savior too. There are a lot of ways that I could do that, but I've chosen to be an airplane mechanic to help do that. You see, there are thousands of people all over the world who live in places that you can only get to with an airplane. And most of these people don't know anything about Jesus. So missionaries have to get on planes to go tell them about Jesus. All right, so we see the main focus of the Christian missionaries is to travel around and tell people about Jesus, right? That's what we see the main focus is. The main focus of the Christian missionaries is to go around and to tell people about Jesus. And he's talking about people everywhere. So he's not even talking about a distinct people. It's going to be my job as an airplane mechanic to make sure that the planes that they ride on are safe and reliable. And if they need to be fixed, I'll fix them. Because most of the people who need airplane mechanics and missionaries live very far away, I'm going to have to move far away too, probably. But I really want those people to be able to hear about Jesus, and I want to make the most of the opportunities God has given me. All right, so again, we can see how he's talking. He's talking because he's trying to reach children. They're trying to teach children about being missionaries and maybe even attempting to recruit some children. Hi, I'm Nathan. When I was five, I realized my sins separated me from God, so I trusted Jesus to save me from sin. When I was seven, <laughs> Notice they keep talking about Jesus. I want y'all to notice that the, the main focal point of the Christian missionary is about Jesus, to tell people about Jesus, to talk about Jesus. I want you to notice that that's the main point. And even though they're saying that the children, is, they're trying to get the children to see that this is the main thing. So even through this video, they're trying to do missionary work for the children. Because this guy's going to explain that that's what his job is, is to try to do missionary work for the children. I heard a story about a missionary telling people about Jesus on a faraway island, and I thought, I want to do that. I imagined I'd be serving God and having exciting adventures in some faraway place. But instead, I stayed in the United States as a missionary teaching kids about Jesus. That's not what I expected, but I got to tell thousands and thousands of kids about Jesus. I started writing books and lessons and ideas to help families and churches teach kids about Jesus. I also got a video camera and started making videos about Jesus for kids and their families. I started a website that shares these things with people around the world so the lessons and videos God helps me make are helping families and churches teach kids about Jesus in Malaysia, and Australia, the Philippines, Romania, South Africa, and many other places. What did you learn about these missionaries? What do they have in common? First, they are both Christians. A Christian is someone who trusts Jesus to save them from sin. All right, so this is the whole idea right here. Notice what they say a Christian is. A Christian is someone who trusts Jesus to save them from sin. Is that what we're doing? Is that our goal and our mission? To trust the rabbi to save us from sin? Now, some people who are still within Christian uh, or just coming out may feel like, yeah, that is the goal. Is it really? Is this what his mission was? To have people to go around and, he, and try to convince the people to trust in him to save them from sin? Was that the mission? What else do they have in common? They both want to help other people learn about Jesus so other people can trust Jesus too. That helps us learn what a missionary is. Okay. Look at what I'm going to say. A missionary is a Christian with the job of helping people learn about Jesus. Is that what the mission of the Mashiach was to be about? To help people to learn about him? And I'm saying him because I know y'all saying Jesus, but if I say Yahshua, you got some people that say, it don't matter what you call him, he's still the same person. So that's why I'm just saying, what, what, again, because I said I'm not going to argue with the people no more. So that's why I'm just saying what it is. So 
Um, what's next? A missionary is a Christian with the job of helping people learn about Jesus. There are lots of ways missionaries help people learn about Jesus. Did you notice ways these missionaries were different? One is going to travel far away to work on airplanes for missionaries. The other stays at home and makes lessons and videos that help kids learn about Jesus. One of them will be using tools like wrenches and ratchets. The other one uses a computer and a video camera. All right, so the mission of Mashiach. What's the mission of Mashiach, right? The mission of the Mashiach is what we need to look at. Because remember, is what they were talking about as far as the mission of the Mashiach was people going around telling you about the Mashiach and that he saves. That is not the mission of the Mashiach. That wasn't his mission. His mission wasn't going around so he could tell people that he he's, he's a savior. What is going on here? I know you said, well, what you mean that's not his mission? That, that's what people say he's supposed to do. You're supposed to go around. No, that is not his mission. I know what people say. I know how people look at it and all that, but I'm here to let you know that wasn't his mission. So you might say, well, what do you mean that wasn't his mission? Well, his mission, we're going to see, but what he told the, the, the disciples. He told the disciples what his mission was. Let's see what he told the disciples his mission was. So he made it clear to his disciples what his mission was. We go right here to Matthews chapter 10 and look right here. It says, and I'm going to put this in the Aramaic uh, only because um, yeah. <laughs> look at what it says. It says, in these 12, Yahshua sent out and he commanded them and said, and he said, you shall not go by the road of the heathen or the Gentiles, you should not enter the city of the Samaritans. Now, what did it say about the missionary? The missionary said they was going everywhere. The missionaries was going to any and everybody, the Christian missionaries was going to any and everybody to tell them about the Mashiach, to tell them about the Rebbe. That's what we just seen on a video that the video was boasting, saying everybody is supposed to do. But now if you look at it clearly here, Yahshua didn't say that. Yahshua said, don't go to the Gentiles. Yahshua said, don't enter the city of the Samaritans. But look where he says to go. But go especially to the sheep that have been lost of the house of Yisrael. That's who you're supposed to go to. The lost sheep of Yisrael. Not to the Gentiles. Not to the Samaritans, which was people that was sort of Gentiles, but yet wasn't. They was kind of in there and out. They ain't even want you to go to them. He said, go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's where you got to go to. The ones that fell astray. The ones that's been so assimilated within the cultures and society that they find themselves in that they may not even know who they are. That's who he's sending you to, right? Mm -hmm. Now, you might say, okay, I hear you, I hear you. So, what, what's, what's next? You might say, yeah, I hear you, and that sounds good and stuff, but, but I said, so now I'm going to say, okay, I hear you. But what's next, right? And it says the same thing in King James, so for those of y'all who love King James, you can still say this. Same thing in King James, but I want to use the Iron Man because I want people to see Yahshua, even though Iron Man is saying Yeshua. But I want people to be able to see that, that, that that's his name and, and not to see the pagan name of Jesus that, that, that they so used to seeing. And I apologize for y'all having to hear that in your hearing as, as I played that video. So it says, verse 7, he says, As you are going, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven has come near, or the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So that's what you ought to preach, right? So the idea that I want you guys to think of is, what does the kingdom of heaven is at hand means? 
What in the world does that mean? The kingdom of heaven is at hand. But what is he talking about? All right, so now, if we want to get to that, that take us to the fourth chapter of Matthews, or Mattiah. And the fourth chapter says, from then on, Yahshua began to preach. So now he's telling them to do what he's doing. So this is not something outside of him. He's preaching this. So he's telling them to preach this. It says, from then on, Yahshua began to preach, return to Elohim, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now this return to Elohim, if you got a King James version, you will see it say repentance. That's because it's the Hebrew word teshuva. And teshuva means to turn, to return, to turn back to the Almighty. So this is the idea. So when he's saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand, he's not coming saying, he didn't come to them and say, hey, go tell them about me. Go tell them that you know me. Go tell them that I'm here. Go tell them that I'm going to save them. That's not what he told his disciples to go do. He didn't say, go tell the people I'm going to save them. Go tell them I'm here. Go tell them it's all about me. He said, go and tell them to teshuva, to return, to repent, to Elohim. That's what teshuva means. So some of yours in the King James, it might just say repent for the kingdom of Elohim is at hand. But we we understand that this is the word teshuva. And it's more than just repenting. It's returning back to Yahweh. He's saying, return back to me. Return back to Yahweh. That's what he's saying. Return back to Yahweh for the kingdom of heaven is near. It's time for you to repent. It's time for you to come back. Now, you might be saying to yourself, what do you mean it's time? What do you mean it's time? Okay, well, let's look at that. This idea of teshuva, why is this message of teshuva something? Why, why is he saying that teshuva? Why is he saying that make teshuva, right? So let's look at this. Now, this time we're going to go to the book of Deuteronomy. We go to Deuteronomy, chapter 30. So you go to Deuteronomy or Devarim, chapter 30, and we will start right at verse 1. Look at what it says. Now it shall come to pass when all these things come upon you, the blessing and the curse, which I set before you. Now, look at what it's saying. See, you got these people out here who say, well, you might get this blessing and you might get this curse. And it's nothing saying that you got to get all the curses. That's what the Ashkenazim will say when you look at them and say, well, y'all didn't experience all the curses. You, you, you saying you experienced some bad and some hardship, but it wasn't all the curses like was spoken of in Devarim or Deuteronomy 28. And they say something like, well, you don't got to go through all the curses. And it didn't say that. Uh, hold up. What does it say? Now it shall come to pass when all these things, all these things, what's all these things that's going to come upon you? The blessing and the curse. All of them. And as we all know, there's only one group of people that experience every last one of those curses. Not uh, I, these people experienced that one. Them people experienced that one. I'm talking about one group of people that experienced all of them. It's only one group of people. We all know who that is. That's us, right? So it's, uh, it's almost like it's telling you who you are right here in the text. Look at what he says, which I set before you. Can remember he said them before us. That was Deuteronomy 28. He says, and you call them to mind among the nations where Yahweh your Elohim drives you. Now, what is this saying? This saying that the Almighty, that, that, that we are, that we're going to be in exile. Number one, it's saying you're going to be in exile. And while you're in exile, and you recall how you got there, he says, and you return to Yahweh Elohim. Now, 
Yeah, let's look at this. I'm gonna look at this to the interlinear. You see this? This is Washafta, right? Washafta, and you return, right? Washafta is from Teshuva. Let's, let's look at this. Shuv. Shuv means to turn back, return, right? The turn back, return. Now, we see right here, it says, Washafta, right? But I want to show you that this word also, once you add the certain prefix, the prefix tau to the front of it, it means you, right? Let me, let, let, let's go. Let's, let's see. See right here, it says Tashuv. This is Tashuv, right? Now, Tashuv and the A uh, at the end, no, only had have a hey at the end. Tashuv, right? Tashuva. That means to, again, to return. Um, but again, it's talking about repentance. This word, Tashuv, is, is, is the same word because it comes from the root word. The root word is Shuv. So let me slide all the way back up to this part up here so you can see the root word. The root word is Shuv, right? Tashuva. Oh, it's right here. <laughs> when you put the towel in front of it, it means you. So Tashuv, right? Tashuv or Tashuva means for you to return. For you to repent. That was the Mashiach's message. The Mashiach's message wasn't, um, hey, believe in me, I'm gonna save you. That wasn't a message. The wasn't the message wasn't, hey, believe in me, I'm gonna save you. Now Krishna runs with that and says, that's his message. His message is for you to believe in him that he's the savior. That's not what his message was. He told, he himself said, Teshuva or Teshuv, return, repent, turn back to the Almighty, right? He himself said that. And then he told his Talmudim to say the same thing. He didn't tell them and tell them, by the way, I'm here and I'm going to save them. He didn't say that. At no time did he say that. But yet the Christian missionaries are running around teaching it. That's why I really want y'all to hear the, the, the video in the beginning. Again, I apologize for not getting it the way that it should have been. I wanted y'all to really hear them keep saying how it's all about believing in him. It's all about believing in him. It's all about believing in him. That's not what the rabbi taught. The rabbi taught return and it's based off of here. Look at what it says. And you return to Yahweh, your Elohim, and you teshuv to Yahweh, your Elohim, and obey his voice. According to all that I command you today, you and your children with all your heart and with all your soul, that Yahweh your Elohim will bring you back from captivity and have compassion on you and gather you again from all the nations where Yahweh your Elohim has scattered you. That's the gospel. That's the real gospel. That's the real message. That's why I get so upset when people try to equate me with Christians. And I know Christians run around saying, believe in the Mashiach, believe in the Mashiach. And he didn't even say to run around and tell nobody to believe in him. He said, tell them to repent. Tell them to turn back to the Almighty. Tell them to grab hold again to the Torah. Now, why are we getting a version where he says, Believe in me, believe in me, believe in me. We're getting this version of believe in me, believe in me, believe in me. Uh, because when the Goyim took over, that's how that's what they did. They ran with that. They couldn't, they couldn't go to this part right here because they didn't accept the Torah and they wasn't being cursed because they kept the Torah. This is what you needed salvation from. This is what the salvation was from. So they said, okay, well, we understand that salvation for them is 
about keeping Torah. But what do we want to say the salvation for us is about? Oh, the salvation for us is about sin. And then they run with that. But as we see clearly here, that's not even a case. That's not even a case as to what, what they was even talking about right here. The case of what they was talking about right here was not about uh, 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 saving them from sin. It was saving them from these curses for breaking the Torah. And the idea is what we see right here, verse 2, teshuva, teshuv, shuv, return, repent, turn back to the Almighty. This is what the Mashiach is teaching, right? Now, this teaching that he was teaching, it was only to the lost sheep of Yisrael. It wasn't to foreigners. He didn't say go to the foreigners and tell them anything because they wasn't under the laws. They didn't accept the Torah. They wasn't under the curses for not keeping the Torah. So he didn't say, hey, go to these foreigners and tell these foreigners to return. Tell them to return from what? What are you talking about? They was never there to return from it. It was never there to make a teshuva. That's why I say what, what I'm what I'm teaching and what brothers with me is teaching is not the same thing that y'all get from Christian. That's why I get so angry when people say, you're a Christian, you're a Christian. I'm like, dude. Number one, that was an insult when they was called that. They said they was called Christians, not they called themselves Christians. They was called Christians. Number one. Number two, what are you talking about? Christians don't teach. Uh, uh, Christians don't, don't go around telling people keep the commandments in the Torah. They tell you the opposite. They say you don't got to keep them. They say it's done away with. Matthews 15, 24. Look what he says. He says, but he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Yisrael. This is what we were sent for. Why was he only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Yisrael? Because those are the ones that's in need of being redeemed from the curse of the law. The curse being because they forsook the Torah, they are under the curses. Now, the book of Davarim or Deuteronomy of, of, of Galatians is making more sense now when he talk about the, the curse of the law. It didn't make sense when he just was talking about some Gentiles. It was like, what, what curse or what law? Are you talking about what Adam ate fruit? It's not talking about that. Now, it is one time where Rav Shaul does make that uh, appeal as he tries to find a way to, to make it, uh, to make uh, this meaningful to the Goyim as well. But this, it was never about that. The Mashiach first told his Talmudine, hey, don't even go and talk to the to the Goyim. Don't go over there to them and don't go to the Samaritans. Now it's a Canaanite woman following around. He's saying, please tell this Canaanite woman to stop following us around, talking to us. And look at what he tells them. And he says, but he answered and said, I was only sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. This is who I was sent to. This is who I was sent to. What's the next thing? Let's go with the next thing. All right, now you got these brethren that 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 get upset and say, I don't need them. I, I'm keeping Torah. I, I don't need them. I. Now, I agree. You don't need them. He ain't come for you. Right? Look at what he says. Again, I'm going by everything that he says. So for people say, I'm coming up, making this stuff up on my own. No, I'm reading to you exactly what it says in the scripture. Look at what he says. He says, uh, I'm going to see if I can get the reader to read this because y'all might be tired of hearing my voice. Let me see if I can get the reader to read and this. And the Pharisee, Matthew the tax collector. 27, after these things, he went out and saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at the tax office. And he said to him, Follow me. 28 So he left all, rose up, and followed him. 
29 then Levi gave him a great feast in his own house. And there were a great number of tax collectors and others who sat down with them. 30. D. And their scribes and the Pharisees, E. Complained against his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? All right, so look at this. Now, the Mashiach is here. And again, I'm going to put it in the Aramaic, even though I, I, I like the read of, of, the, of the King James, but just because I want y'all to hear Yahshua's name and not um, be blinded by, it's saying JC, it's saying JC. So I want y'all to, to see, it's, it's saying Yahshua's name, right? Look at what the, the Pharisees complained. The Pharisees complained to the Talmudim said, why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners, right? This is what they're complaining about. This is where he's going to let them know, I ain't come for y'all. I ain't come for y'all righteous ones. Look at what it says. It says. Let me see if I can right click this and see if, it's, if the, the, the young 31, lady and Yeshua it. answered and he said to them, a doctor is not sought for the healthy, but for those who have become very ill. All right. A doctor is, is not, not here for, for the healthy but for those that are very ill. In other words, you people that's righteous, y'all keep a Torah and all this other stuff, he didn't come for you. Right? He not coming for you. He didn't come for you. Now, you might feel offended by me saying that. Oh, well, most of y'all might not. Y'all say y'all don't, don't want to hear nothing from him anyway. Okay, y'all don't got to worry about hearing from him. He ain't come for you. If you really righteous, you really keeping Torah? You really doing all the stuff that you're supposed to do? Guess what? He ain't coming for you. Look at what he says. You. 32 inch I have not come that I may call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Now, again, this repentance is Teshuva. I did not come to call the righteous, but the sinners to Teshuva. I called for the one I came for the for the lost sheep of Israel that fell, fell astray. That come for you righteous ones that's keeping Torah. Y'all righteous, y'all keeping the Torah, y'all good. I didn't come for y'all. My mission is to awaken the spirit within these ones who aren't keeping the Torah, who ain't thinking nothing about the Torah, who don't want to know anything about it. I, I'm, I'm sent here to awaken that spirit in them and say, repent. To Shuva, come back. It is time. So again, he didn't come for you. All right? What else? It says, who are the Talmudines sent to find throughout the whole world? So some of y'all might really, really want to hold on to it. Even though you say you don't care nothing about him, you still like, well, hold on. He did come for me too. <laughs> All right, or some of y'all might say, well, no, he did say go to the Gentiles, right? Let's look at what he says. Let's look at what he says. So we can go to verse 16. It says, then the 11 disciples or the 11 Talmudim so let, let's, let's read this in the Aramaic. Let's just I'm gonna make sure. Okay. In the Aramaic, it's a Peshitta. The Peshitta Holy Bible translated, translated by Glenn De But the 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Yeshua had appointed them. 17, and when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some of them doubted. All right, so... Now, don't get hung up on this worship him thing. I told you, told you, I told you y'all worship him. Uh, this time about reverence. It's the reverence that you will have for any leader or whoever that's over you is saying that they respect or that they reverence him. Um, they probably ministered to him, uh, to whatever his needs was at the time. That's what it's speaking about. Please don't take this out of context. That's not what it's saying. All right, so now, where is he took him? He took him back to right where he first gave him the commission. This is bringing you right back into this attitude or mindset of where you was at. This is where you was at when I first gave you the mission. This is where you was at when I first spoke to you. I'm bringing you back here. 
Now, as I'm bringing you back here, I'm about to give you a, a mission, but all I'm going to do is reaffirm the mission that I already gave you. Doubted. 18 and Yeshua spoke with them and he said to them, All authority has been given to me in heaven and in the earth, in the manner in which my Father has sent me, I am sending you. 19 inch death. All right, so what does that mean? In the manner which my Father has sent me. So what he said in the manner which the Father, the Almighty, has sent him, he says, I'm sending you. How did the Almighty send him? He only sent them to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Ain't that what he said? I was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So what he says, in the manner in which my father has sent me, I'm sending you. He said, I'm sending you in the same way my father sent me to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I'm not sending you to everybody. And anybody that don't know nothing about me, you got to let them know about me. So everybody got know everybody got know about me that I'm gonna save them. He didn't say any of that. What was the message that the father gave him? To tell the people that to shoot or to repent. That's the same message he expected them to do. To tell the people that to shoot or to tell them to repent. He didn't expect them to go around telling people believe in him that he the savior. That he the son of the living Elohim. He didn't tell him to go around telling anybody any of those things. He said to go and let the people know to repent. The same thing that my father sent me to do. This is what I'm telling you to do, right? Look at what it says. I'm going to let you hear the woman say it. Therefore, go disciple all the nations and baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Spirit of Holiness. All right. So he says, therefore, go and make Talmudim of all the nations, right? What, what, what is that talking about, right? That's not talking, they, and still they not going to the, what's the name? To the, what's the name? They going to the known world to find all the people of Israel, of Is, or the lost sheep of Israel that's throughout the known world now. Now it's like, I'm going to send you throughout the known world to find the lost sheep of Israel. Whatever the lost sheep of Israel is, uh, I want you to hunt out and find the lost sheep of Israel and make them into students of yours so that they would know how to keep. That's what a, Tal, a Talmud is or a disciple is a student. I want you to go make them students of yours. I want you to teach them. What do I want you to teach them? Holiness. 20 inch and instruct them to keep everything, whatever I have commanded you. Now, and instruct them to keep everything whatever i commanded you so in other words to instruct them to keep the torah and how to keep the torah that's why when i tell people they even say well, why did you following him it's a, i'm like because he's teaching me how to keep the torah he's giving me the instructions on how to keep the torah now if you say you don't need it okay fine that's you I'm not going to try to make you uh, uh, believe in him and read from his book. That's you. But now as I read from this book and I'm able to break down things about the Torah that you might didn't even think about, and you'd be like, oh, man, I didn't even think about that. And I'm like, oh, yeah, the Rebbe taught that. Just like the Kassad, uh, the, the, the Kabad community does, right? The Kabad community has a Rebbe. His name was Rabbi Snearson. Right, this guy passed on, but they still run around teaching from his teachings to this day. They say the Rebbe said this, the Rebbe said that. I'm saying the same thing about mine. The Rebbe said this, the Rebbe said that. The instructions that he gave me, I can now turn back and give them to others. The same thing. So look what he says. He says, my sheep listen to my voice. Again, the idea behind this is what did the disciples hear, right? What did the disciples hear? The disciples heard something. What did they hear? Right? What did they hear? What did the disciples hear? So when he told the disciples to go out in all the world, what did they hear from that? 
Let's look at this. It says, certain men came down from Judea and taught the brethren, unless you are circumcised, according to custom of Moshe, you cannot be saved. Now, what's this business of being circumcised? It's not just about being circumcised in your foreskin and this, that, that. But the idea of circumcision, as we know today, especially when you see it in Judaism today, the idea of circumcision is to be a convert. So he's saying, unless these people are converted to become part of Israel, they can't be saved. Why is he saying that? It's not saying, oh, because we're trying to be prejudiced against them and all this other mess. The idea is, what are these foreigners going to be saved from? They never pledged allegiance to the Torah. They never said they was going to do the things of the Torah and fell short from it. So now they need to be saved. They never fell short. So what are they going to be saved from? Right? How are you going? How they going to be saved? The only way you, you can make them put them in a predicament where they need the salvation, which is a Mashiach coming and saying repent and teshuva, is if they was part of the people. That's what's being argued here. It's not a racial thing. It's not a prejudice thing. What's being argued here is they they not under the covenant. So they they what they being saved from. They're not under the covenant. That's why Yahshua, that's why the Rebbe said, don't go, don't go talk to them. Right? But these guys just happen to be around and they seen the people that's they've been around all this time now coming to repentance and doing Teshuva and being saved. They say, hey, we like what's what y'all hearing, and we want to be a part of this too. Right? So that's so that's where that's coming at, where they want to join in too. So that's where that comes in at, this thing about Teshuva for them. That's why as you go further down, look at what it says. They talk about them um, 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 receiving a Ruach and so forth. But look what it says in verse 5, but some of the sect of the Pharisees who believed, so these was Pharisees who believed rose up saying it is necessary to circumcise them and to command them to keep the Torah of Moshe. Why are they saying that? Because how can they be saved or fall short of the Torah if they weren't circumcised or they didn't convert and they weren't commanded to keep the Torah in the first place? What are they being redeemed from? It don't make sense. These are doctors of the law. This is something that they like, what are you talking about? This doesn't make sense. We can't do this. So it gives you the idea that the Talmudin or the disciples did not have it in mind to deal with the Gentiles. Look at what happens. It says, because when, when it was happening, look at what it says. It says, Therefore, when uh, Shaul and Baaba, and let's let's look at the Aramaic so you can see what I'm saying. It should say uh, they got Barnaba. It should be Baaba. <laughs> okay, so when Shaul and Baaba seen this situation going on, they ain't know what to say. Like, what do we do? What do we say? We don't know what to do. We don't know what to say. I like how I read it in King James better. So what happens? It says, now the apostles or the Shalachim and the Zechonim, the elders came together to consider this matter. Why? This was a, a big deal because they never expected the Gentiles to believe and to come in because their mission wasn't to go talk to them. But now that they are coming in and even Kepha himself or Peter himself had to deal with a situation with like this, it's like now they're like, what do we do? How do we deal with this? And this brings us to where we are today, where I would like to say nothing can separate us from the love of Elohim, right? Nothing. 
we are so we've been so far removed and yet to this day now you see brothers waking up like our brother here uh rabbi capers and and others and all walks in life the brothers who i was talking to in the groups there's this in the grassroots is just waking up and, and and saying hey we want our own act and that's how we doing it right brothers everywhere just waking up brothers in the islands waking up people everywhere just starting to wake up right so much so that, that they got infiltrators and trying to infiltrate and try to make us look like violent people and all this other stuff right which is crazy but the whole idea is they can't stop what's happening from happening can't stop it we waking up we coming to Torah we striving to do what it is that the almighty says to do and, and, and let's look at this look at what it says this is Romans right I just want y'all to see this last part from Romans it says Romans 8.35. Who can separate us from the love of the Mashiach? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Who is this him who loved us? This is talking about Yahweh. Yahweh loved us so much, he didn't just let us fall to the wolves. He came up with a plan to redeem us. He came up with a plan to bring us to repentance, right? To even now. Look at what it says, for I'm fully persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principality, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of Elohim, which is in the Mashiach. Let me go, because I know y'all like, oh, he was saying, saying JC. Uh, let's go back. <laughs> I'm going to let the young lady read it out for us. Sheep for slaughter. 37 But in 35 What will separate me from the love of the Messiah, suffering, or imprisonment, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? 36 As it is written, For your sake we are killed every day, and we are accounted as sheep for slaughter. 37 But in all these things we are victorious by him who has loved us. 38. I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor authorities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things future, 39. Nor height, nor depth, neither any other created thing, shall be able to sever me from the love of God, which is in our Lord Yeshua the Messiah. That's powerful. So, again, don't get caught up. And, and what you being called or trying to prove this and that to people. I, 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 after, after the week I done had and the different things and the encounters I had with brethren, I'm like, you know what, it's, 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 this is wasting our time. We, we need to build. So I'm not even gonna waste our time on it. What I'm gonna tell the brothers to do is, hey brothers, this is what we gotta do. I keep Torah. Gotta make teshuva. That's what it's about. It's about making teshuva. It's about keeping Torah. That's what it's all about, right? Make it teshuva and keep a Torah. That's what it's all about. That's what the rabbi came to do. Rabbi didn't say run around and argue with people about who he is. Argue with people and tell them they have to read his this book about him arguing and tell people that they got to believe in him. Rabbi didn't say to do any of those things. Christianity said to do those things. But Rabbi didn't say to do any of those Rabbi said, go and tell people, repent and keep the Torah. Repent and keep the Torah. 
That's what we're supposed to be telling people. That's the missionary work. The missionary work is not to run around telling people, hate people, um, believe in the, in the Mashiach that he came to save you. The missionary work is to tell the people, hate people, return to the Almighty, make the Shuva, stop sinning, and come back to the Almighty and do what it is that you were supposed to do so we can come up from under these curses and be redeemed and go home. Because nothing can separate us. Nothing can separate us from the love of Elohim. I want to thank you all again for dealing with me and the many things that went on. I don't know what was going on. I don't know if something got knocked off or what. I'm going to try to figure it out for next week because next week, again, is going to be an important show. We're going to deal with Isaiah 53. So tell a friend, pass it along. We're going to deal with Isaiah 53. We're we'll looking at uh, Brother Timothy's video from DOA. Brother Timothy from DOA, he has a deep video about Isaiah 53. Uh, we want to really go through this and look at this. And I'm going to make sure that everything is up to par as it should be um, for next week. Um, all right. Thank you again, everyone. And I bid you shalom.